So this work is, is in collaboration with Felipe Alves Pereira. He's my advisor. He spoke yesterday. And uh, I'm going to give you some of the applications, uh, a few of the applications that uh, the model that he was describing yesterday, the framework, uh, can, where the framework can be applied. Uh, I don't have to tell you why I use probability, why I use entropy. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about the dynamics which comes from entropy. And then I'm going to look again at the model of adaptive agents. These are neural networks that learn from each other. And uh, for the applications, I'm going to look at the U.S. Court of Appeal for the only an important reason that I have data about it. Okay, and I have data for other other applications, but I won't I won't have any time. So the recipe to study a system within maximum entropy is to identify first of all what are the degrees of freedom. What are you talking about? And then you start from a prior probability, Q, identify known futures, uh, features, constraints, update probabilities. For example, you get the, Maxwell, uh, the Gibbs Boltzmann distribution. Calculate all the parameters, compare the empirical data, publish. But in nowhere does it say that this has to be used only in physics. So this can be used in other places. Maybe it can only be done in a department of physics, but it can be applied to other things. So I'm going to look at a society of adaptive agents. So suppose I have this agent, let's call it Homo entropicus, just for fun. And uh, he's a neural network. She is a neural network. You have a, a small group um, walking around in the savannas of uh, the entropics. Yeah? What is the dynamics of exchange of information? This is what, uh, um, how do they exchange information? I'm going to assume that there is some kind of selection so that they exchange information in an efficient way. Yes? And uh, then I'm going to look at, first I'm going to look at the exchange of information between pairs, get something that is optimized, it's coming from entropy, from base, from this kind of idea. And then I'm going to apply this to another setting, large groups, groups like us, or smaller groups, but modern groups. So this, is, this has evolved in one type of environment and it's going to be used in some other type of environment. So any optimality that might have been selected for during the course of their uh, uh, evolution uh, might not be, seem to be so optimal in our context. Uh, so I have these agents and they have a fixed architecture. So they have some parameters which, given the architecture, the set of parameters eta for each agent specify what they are going to have to say about a certain issue. So issues are going to be vectors. I'm going to explain a little bit more later. And eta denotes the state of the agent. And there is some function sigma. And the opinion of agent i about issue x is just this function. I'm going to take this as uh, minus one and one values, but it could be something else. Then I'm going, I don't have information about the parameters. I have incomplete information about those parameters, so I'm going to put a distribution of probability. And uh, uh, I'm going to choose a family of distributions of probability which have some parameters. So this family has, uh, for each member of the family, I have a set of lambdas here. Oh, this, is, this can be a, a, a vector, uh, an array, array of, of values. And uh, 
for, for this family, all I have to know in order to identify the lambdas is the value of the expected values of a set of functions. So this, the, the, the expected values of these functions, once they are given, they identify one particular function. Yes? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm describing the agents. So I have personal knowledge about this agent. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm an anthropologist looking at these agents. Okay? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, now I look at the society. I have... I, I pick up two agents, A and J. J is the emitter of information. I is the receiver of information. And uh, once agent I receives the opinion of agent J about a given issue, which is public, I can do Bayesian updating. Yes? And Bayes is a prior, a likelihood, and this likelihood is something that depends on the architecture of this agent. And then there is this uh, normalizing term, which in some communities is called the evidence. In another, it's called partition functions, normalizing. So this is going to be a central quantity. Are we happy? Yes. <laughs> Always happy. Great. So. The, the point being that once you stipulate the likelihood and you have a family, this might not be conjugated, so this uh, Bayesian posterior might be away from the family. So, uh, I was here. I this is the state of information that I, the modeler, have about agent I. It receives information, I go here, but I want to describe it again in this manifold, okay? And so I have to somewhat, some, somehow find this guy here. But while this is outside of the manifold, it still provides me with values for the expectation of these functions, which are these FAs. So once I give you the set of new constraints, I can identify this guy by maximum entropy. So going from a prior to a posterior, and that's a, a, that's a dynamics. And that's a dynamics generated by entropy, and that's why it's an entropic dynamic. And, and you might ask, why don't I stick to base? Well, because I want to describe this architecture within the set of parameters that, for example, uh, are the weights of a neural network. So I just cannot complicate the model by looking at the base posterior like that. Uh, this is just to show you that I can do this in a few lines. But the thing is that once I had prior constraints and I have some evidence, the new constraints are going to be given by this equation. And this reflects on the change in the hyperparameters of the family, and this is going to be the learning algorithm for the neural networks that I'm studying. So, while I'm not telling you what this is, I'm going to tell you later, this is, this, this is a very principled algorithm. I'm not putting this in an ad hoc manner. This is the best thing I can do in order to analyze what is going on with these neural networks that I'm studying. So, now let's make an, a model of opinion. Uh, so, what are, what are the variables, what are the degrees of freedom I'm talking about? I'm going to talk about degrees of freedom that have weights for the neural network, and also a parameter here, epsilon, which is how much agent I trusts the emitter agent J. So when you're looking at a society, there's always the possibility that the guy that is giving you information is cheating or is communicating through a noisy channel or, yeah, trying to take advantage of you, whatever. So you have to judge the information that you receive, and this is going to be done by this parameter. So this defines 
the state of the agent, a weight of synaptic weights in a language of neural networks, and a distrust parameter, which is between zero when it trusts fully the other agent, and one when it distrusts fully the other agent. So we have an opinion. Now, this is a particular model. I can, make, I can make, make this more complicated, but I'm only going to look at judges in the US, so they can be very simple. Okay? So the opinion is it's obtained by the dot product between the issue, which is a vector, and the weights of this machine, which is a vector. And I'm going to just take the, the for or against position. This is the sign, one or plus, one, plus one or minus one, and this is a perceptron. So I'm looking at a society of perceptrons which learn by an optimal algorithm. Okay, distrust is the probability of cheating. So instead of receiving sigma, the agent should have received sigma prime, and that leads to a likelihood who fits the Bayes rules, which is epsilons times something that is one or zero, depending if they disagree, uh, and one minus epsilon, depending on whether they disagree, and, and one minus epsilon if, times one if they agree, or zero if they disagree. Okay. So I'm going to make a model now. I have to choose the family of distributions. I choose Q to be a Gaussian family on the weights. And uh, so now these are going to be the variables I'm interested, the covariance and the, 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 the mean values. And uh, for the distrust sector, I'm going to use a distribution. Uh, uh, this is a variable from 0 to 1. So I'm going to choose uh, uh, the CDF of a, of a uh, no, uh, normal distribution. And Z here is some normal uh, with mean mu and uh, variance S squared. So uh, this quantity mu, if mu is, is negative, this is below one half, and, uh, uh, and the, the spect I, I'm sorry, the expected value of this is below one half. So if mu is negative, the agents are in a trusting relation, a courteous relation. And if, if mu is larger than, than zero, then epsilon, the expected value of epsilon is larger than than one half, and they are in a distrusting or discourteous uh, relation. The Lagrange multipliers, um, lambda, that uh, I spoke before, are, will be written in terms of the expected value omega hat and c, and of the distrust parameter mu and its uncertainty. So. Now, this is more or less a repetition of what I said. Um, and I jump this because this I've said. Uh, the, the evidence is going to be a very, well, if you look at from afar, it's a very ugly function. If you look at, at close range, it's a very beautiful. And I'm not going to uh, just tell you that I have a, a close form, form for that. And it gives me an algorithm learning, uh, uh, one agent learning from the other, I change the expected values. These are the synaptic weights of the perceptron. This is the covariance. So this covariance acts like a schedule uh, a mechanism. So it, 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 it helps to modulate the size of the changes. And, and, and this quantity E is the log of the, it's minus the log of the evidence. So at the end, the optimal learning algorithm is a, it's a gradient along the, the evidence, so in order to increase the evidence. Um, and here it's the same. For the distrust model, it's also a gradient uh, in, with respect to the, to the log of the evidence. Uh, well, this is, okay. This is the change. Uh, in distrust when the agent that receives the information agrees with the agent that emitted. And uh, if, 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 they, if they agree and they, 
were friends, they were in a trusting relation, nothing much happens. But if they, they agree and they were distrust, there's a negative change in mu, so the mu gets more negative and the distrust diminishes and they, uh, uh, that, that, that the, the, the dynamics, okay? And if they trust, distrust each other, it's, um, it's the other way around. A, a, if, they were, if they were trusting each other, they would distrust each other a little bit more after the exchange. But this, this is the one you have to remember once you leave. Uh, you see, suppose Ariel and John agree on quantum mechanics on some issue, then they're going to... S well, it's a surprise, yes? And learning here is driven by surprises. If you distrust the guy's opinion, but he says something that you agree, there's going to be change. What are you going to change? Are you going to change your opinion or are you going to change the attribution of distrust to the other guy? If you, if you are very sure of your opinion, you change the other guy's uh, uh, attribution of distrust. If you are not very sure about your opinion, you're near the border of, uh, between positive and negative answers, then you change your opinion and maintain the trust that you have to the other. So you have, this is, this, you, you, you learn by surprises and you learn by attributing the blame either to the mistrust that you have in the guy or that the lack of a strong opinion about the issue. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, now let's go to the appellate court. I have three judges forming a panel. They vote on 14 cases. I have data from, from a book of Cass Sunstein a uh, long story about him, but I don't have time, which gives the percentage of votes on the liberal position by each judge, well, he gives the average, uh, by each judge on these 14 type of cases, which range from very ideological to very non-ideological. Uh, the judges are appointed by either a Democrat or Republican president, and there is, therefore there are six types of judges. The judges are a Republican voting together with two other Republicans, a Republican with another Republican and a Democrat, Republican with two Democrats, Democrat, two Republicans, Democrat. What is the capital letter? It's the, the guy that I'm looking at. That's, okay. I'm looking at, uh, at the votes of a Republican in a context or a Democrat on a given context. The model I have is the following for the judges. Now, that, that I have the data. Now, what is the model? For, I, I'm going to look at a society of three perceptrons, and I'm going to put here initial conditions on the weights. The initial conditions on the weights are going to, made up, uh, going to be made up of three contributions. One is L, common to every judge. We suppose that they went to law school. They learned the law. They have some common knowledge. Then there is a... If, if it was appointed by party A, there is a, a contribution that it's the same for all those judges that are, for example, Republican, and a contribution for all judges that are Democrat. And then there is some random part to describe that people are different, uh, okay? Uh, I'm going to do simulations, and I'm going to consider four scenarios. Um, Judges from the same party, they, they uh, uh, trust each other, they have a negative mu. But from different and opposing parties, they might have uh, courteous or discourteous relations, and they, be un they might be certain or uncertain about their positions. Uh, so I choose a panel, I choose an issue, let the three agents exchange opinions, let them vote, repeat for the 14 issues, Repeat, rah, 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 gather information about a vector J, which is 14-dimensional vector, uh, and each component is a fraction of times a judge in a given panel votes in the liberal position, minus 0.5. I look at the angles, and I can look at the alignment between judges in a panel. And this is the result. This is the empirical data. This is a matrix of the angle of alignment in reality, and the guys measure this, 
between a Republican uh, with two Republicans, and he's very similar, of course, the angle is zero, with a Republican with two Republicans, and very different from a Democrat with two Democrats. Okay? So this is the empirical data. And this is the initial conditions from the, 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 the picture I showed, that is the law, the party, and the idiosyncratic. But then I let these guys interact for each of the four scenarios, and you find that this is very similar to the courteous and certain scenario, and very different from discourteous and discourteous certain, uncertain, courteous and uncertain. So it means that despite, despite what you knew or you thought you knew about judges in an appeal court, Democrats and Republicans seem to be trusting each other. That's a surprise. So we learn from surprises, that's a surprise. And they are sure they treat each other with respect, they extend the courtesy of being sure and trusting of the other guy's information. Minus one, okay, almost there then. This is, this is something of interest to, 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 for these times. Uh, this is the same data, and, and, and just, this is the same data that was in the previous picture, and I can change the values, the relative importance of the law and of the party, and uh, this is the signature this is the, the, the empirical signature. This is the signature you would have for judges that follow the law only. And this is the signature that you would have for judges that only follow the party ideology. So you see that it's a mixture of those, of courteous and certain about the courtesy that they extend each other, but they still are ideological and they still... Uh, follow the law. Okay, so I had, well, I had more, but I'm being kicked out of here. Um, the thing is, what Felipe showed yesterday about, um, this is Washington Post, this is many agents in, in Middle East, I can talk to you later, and uh, we have, we have um, polarization of, when, uh, um, of groups, but in this case, we, we Philippe, I, I don't have time to show you that. But anyway, um, the thing is that for big groups, if you have few issues being discussed, you're going to have a matrix of distrust of groups separated into groups. Uh, but if you have many issues under discussion, you have a very complicated and spin-glass-like spin -like, uh, scenario. So this is interesting because uh, for, to, if you look, this is the, the state of the United States today. And many other countries, you have a separation of groups into bands. And uh, this is the, 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 the scenario in the Middle East. You have many, many uh, agents discussing many, many issues. So you have this spin glass behavior. And uh, this is a quote to end, before you kick me out, uh, of this guy who it's uh, what... American presidents should aim at being, yes? And he says the process is this. Three, four, half a dozen questions are prominent at a given time. That it means few issues. And that's why, uh, and the party selects his candidates and he takes his position and then the system polarizes. And he's talking in, 19, in, in 1848 about the polarization of the United States. So Lincoln knew about this, this kind of, of things. Uh, thank you.